whatever was going on with that tripod <laughs> over there. The camera unscrewed. This guy walked into the walked into the studio and he was like, "Hold up, hold up, what's going on with this camera over here?" And I was like, "Bro, <laughs> the thing was like unscrewed by like that, like that." <laughs> You know what it is, this is season two of Trust the Process. My name is Kyle, and today I'm sitting down with the very talented and good friend, Alex Stevens. How are you doing, man? Doing good, man. Thanks for inviting me out here. Since yeah, I no, absolutely. Um, I couldn't have you on the first season when it was all online, but uh, I'm really excited to have you here Thank and you. talk some photo video vibes. Hell yeah, man, let's do it. So without further ado, I'm gonna start it off a little bit easy. Uh, <laughs> first of all, tell everybody who you are and what you do. So I'm Alex Stevens, and uh, for the most part now, I've just been basically doing full-time uh, video and editing primarily, and I also do photography. Um, won't pass any of that up, but I definitely like to focus a little more on the video side of the, the media world. I love uh, media production, open for anything. Say word. Um, so at what age did this kind of passion really begin, as far as you can remember? So. Man, it's, it's been quite a journey, like looking back on it, it's been quite a journey. Because um, yeah, I, uh, I went to camp when I was younger and really my first introduction was as a camper there, kind of. That summer I started, um, I downloaded like a time-lapse app on my phone because back right. in the day we didn't have that built in, we had, like my Galaxy S3, right? Yeah. Uh, so I would play around with that and just that experience allowed me to have a conversation with the camp videographer at the time and then he's like, yo, you want to mess with this camera? And like, I never touched an expensive like camera before. And oh, like, wow. I was, Hell yeah, man. So um, yeah. that I got my hands on a camera and like ever since then I was able to um, go to a high school that had a really good uh, comp tech program and I got really into it. I bought my first DSLR, I think in 20. 14, I'm pretty sure, and um, just did started off with the whole photography thing. Uh, I see a lot of people getting into it, and uh, it's nice because you're just like the world is just this open canvas of like I'll just like take pictures of everything, yeah. um, and uh, and there's no pressure because you don't have to make money off it or anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so that's how it kind of started, and then I started doing it a little bit more. Um, I don't know how much you want me to get into it now, the, the progression into yeah, uh, man. this stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like I started uh, doing a few gigs on the side. Like I'd, I'd get asked to be like a second shooter um, by actually one of the guys that was the camp videographer actually brought me on some weddings and stuff like that. Nice. And uh, I, I did like a, a little mentorship thing through school with the guys that do the Diamond and Diamond commercials, which, oh, no kidding. which he worked at. Uh, and, and so like that connection was just like pretty important to developing that and it's and it kind of shows you like who you know especially at a young age really like impacts like where you might end up and the, the mindset that I'm thinking of now and like especially when I was a camp videographer as well yeah. um, was I kind of want to like be open enough to like and maybe inspire some kids, like the kids that would come talk to me, like, yo, like this camera stuff's so cool, or whatever. Yeah. I would always have to think in the back of my head, like, I know it's kind of scary, like, letting kids, like, use your camera or, like, even just, like, be around expensive <laughs> stuff. But I was like, yeah, like, I should probably, you know, let these kids have a little bit of a chance, kind of like what I had. And, and uh, yeah, started in the wedding game events kind of thing. Nice. And, um, yeah, I guess uh, from there, it's kind of started doing other stuff, but. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. That, that was a great rundown. And I guess you bring up like an important point about, you know, learning about it from a young age, you know, because you were able to hold that camera and maybe go explore in the woods or, you know, and, and take some maybe blurry photos at the time. Who knows what the photos look like? Do you yeah. have the photos, like your first ever photos? I have, well, yeah, I mean, I have a good selection of my like first ever DSLR shots nice. and and like it's, it's really weird looking back on because like it's the kind of thing now where I don't do it as much as a hobby as I did then so like now it's like it's work for me it's like the best kind of work I could be doing but it's at the end of the day I mean it's still like 
I need a free time other than that yeah, <laughs> at yeah. some point. Uh, so it's it's a different mindset that I'm in now than I than I was then, and that, that's I think it happens with everyone when they're um, if they make a their hobby or their passion their job. It's just like this shift of like oh wow this is sick like I get to do this like all the time and then it's like oh well now I have to do this all the time. You have to do this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so but what I what I do like about it is that with with media production and that related stuff is like there's so much stuff you can do like it's not just like an office job where you're, you're just doing like the same thing every day or whatever like with this kind of stuff some of my favorite parts is just the amount of people i can see and like places i can go to like events and and even like weddings being a part of like people's like some of the like most important days of their lives yeah. like and, and just being like there with it all and and like even like shooting music videos like with Kyle himself what? <laughs> like even just making the memories and stuff of that just keeps like it's just it's just so much fun like yeah I like that aspect of it quite a bit yeah well it seems like you know you still have that passion even though it's it's work now yeah you know seeing the way your, your eyes light up when you're talking <laughs> about it it's evident the passion is, is still there yeah um you brought up a really good point about the shift that occurs when you take something that you love to do as a hobby and turn it into a perhaps business. Mm -hmm. So if you could t like touch on those, how your mindset shifted when you went from doing this for fun to doing this for a business and what steps you took to transition that. Yeah, like it was weird because it kind of like blended together. It mm. wasn't like a, a straight shift. And I guess for a lot of people, it probably won't be like that unless you do something like really big and be like, oh, I want to start a company with someone. I'm going to raise all this money and suddenly start it like yeah. right off the yeah. shot. So like that kind of situation would be a little bit different than kind of how I started out, although big things might be coming, you know, I'm not going to say anything too specific, but who knows what will happen in the next few years yeah. uh, with, <laughs> with the development of everything. But um, yeah, growing it from the beginning was like, I realized that I can start make, making money off of it and um, kind of feeling how much I could charge for how comfortable I was. And then sometimes going a little bit above that and it starts out like really small and like oh man I don't know if I could charge for this or whatever and then in the back of my mind I'm like well you know like I know I'm like in comparison to what even the pros do when I was like younger too like the the difference of that quality uh, and my quality is, isn't as big of a gap as someone who hasn't touched a camera before so I can charge something for this and, mm -hmm. and so like just starting out um, I just started uh, mainly like getting more comfortable that's the main thing the, the biggest kind of like roadblock when you're starting out is like thinking you're not good enough when mm. you really are. <laughs> and, and so like, but that really just comes with like the practice that you get just like being on different sets and like working in different environments. Beyond the photography and videography work uh, or traditional photography and videography work, uh, you've had the opportunity, a well-deserved opportunity, to work on a short film. Mm -hmm. So I know it, it might be on lock, but tell us what you can about Ripen and, and that experience. Yeah, so like Ripen is about um, a father who is uh, like a single father who is trying to raise uh, his kid and is really just not on the same page until a certain uh, incident where she shows him uh, shows him what's up basically and mm -hmm. uh, they become closer after that. It's a really heartwarming story yeah. and uh, yeah you can you can totally find it uh, I think on, on Facebook and Instagram you can look up Ripen Film uh, and that'll be an easy spot to find there and uh, we're going to be having uh, hopefully an in-person premiere maybe this year uh, see how things go. Sweet. Um, it was an especially unique experience during like the time frame that we did it at, mm -hmm. and I'm sure it was it was like that for all of our our uh, projects at the time of okay we got to do this during COVID now, which really was only a consideration after the script was already made. So uh, yeah, it was so cool being a part of of Ripen's team, and like the biggest point with this kind of stuff is that like you have to get along with people really well um, and because 
looking at it now, the project's been as a part of my life for like the past like basically two years kind of thing. Yeah. Because it's, it's like still trailing on now with like dealing with like the perks and like Indiegogo stuff that we have to like uh, figure out and like and making the like DVD copies and stuff like that. Um, being a part of being a significant part of the, the film, that's why we're making DVDs for it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like COVID was really unique. So it was really nice getting to know the whole group of it. There's just people that I didn't hang out with as much um, beforehand, but now it's like great that we're so close. Um, but the project itself uh, was interesting because yeah, like we were all doing school from, from home at that yep. point. And it was a really weird place to be in, being at home all the time and preparing for this thing that was going to happen that felt so normal, um, being like, okay, so we're going to show up and shoot this thing at, on, on these two weekends or whatever. And it was just in the future for the longest time until it wasn't. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> and, then, and then it was like go time. And it was, it was great to be back working with the equipment and everything. Uh, but it was, I remember especially going to pick up the equipment uh, for the first time, I was like, whoa, this is so weird doing this again. And um, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was just such a hustle. We had to go in. I had to grab the equipment on one day, like the day before, and then um, <laughs> had to bring it back to my house. Like next day, I had to like go all the way downtown. Oh, geez, bro. I had to, we had to unpack everything. We had to like set up uh, like, tents and stuff in like the property across the street like in the backyard oh, wow. we had to like uh store equipment so the, the place we were shooting at was really small the main location was really small and um the really the only spot that we could store equipment was like in the truck that i was using and a van that we had and we had to park those on the street and like we had to hope that no one parked in the, fir the first spots there in order to oh. <laughs> in order to to like Wow. put all of our stuff there because we had to have easy access to it mm -hmm. um but like, yeah like stuff like that where it's just like just like production stuff that you don't really like think about beforehand but it's like whoa yeah kind of stuff <laughs> um but actually filming it was uh, an interesting uh interesting experience for sure like yeah, it was quite a hustle for yeah. sure yeah <laughs> so would you say but everything else went smoothly, right? Like everything else was cool compared to, I guess, this incident or was there, <laughs> should you expect when you're doing these productions just to have like kinks along the way? Basically, you just have to expect, expect that something's going to happen and you just gotta, you're just basically wondering what it is going to be and, and just yeah. have the open-mindedness of, of like when something happens, you have to be able to like turn and fix it. Like I've, I've just been on all kinds of certain like things and you just have to think in the moment and luckily, I'm blessed enough to be able to do that pretty well. Like I can yeah. function in higher stress situations and like, and just start like working and figuring out stuff um, pretty naturally. And like, I'm pretty optimistic of if, like I could probably fix something if something come, come, comes along the way. Like that's kind of the mentality I usually have. And like, once you start like, you start thinking about that, you start looking for the solutions to things instead of looking for the excuses of why you can't start doing things. Yeah. So um, then, yeah, then you start solving problems and you basically just have to have that mindset when you're, when you're working in that environment. Yeah. Uh, just, yeah, being open for everything, but yeah. And that comes with experience, right? Like the more yeah. you're on set, and I think it goes back to the idea of just showing up and making stuff happen. The more you do that, the more you can figure out solutions for future problems. Like, oh, yeah. I've, I've seen that before. I know how to fix that, you know? Like yeah. with the... Uh, with uh, whatever was going on with that tripod <laughs> over know, there. The camera unscrewed. This guy walked into the walked into the studio and he was like, hold up, hold up, what's going on with this camera over here? And I was like, bro. The thing was like unscrewed by like, like that. <laughs> it proves my point. It comes with experience. There it's you true. go. It's true. To wrap things up, I want to ask you, uh, because this show is called Trust the Process after <laughs> all, um, for someone looking to get into whether it's photography, videography, uh, and we can even keep it general in that regard. What one piece of advice could you give to that person? Like the main thing that comes to mind and really just like inspired <laughs> from process in general is that like if you feel like you can't do something, it's because you haven't found the process yet. And, wow. and once you find it, yeah. then, then it starts falling into place. Like it's super easy. And then you can, you can trust your process, right? But yeah. like 
I realized that where I was like, like, why do I feel like I can't do this? And then, and, and then I just realized, oh, because like, well, I haven't really figured out how to do it or, or, or anything like that. And, um, and also, it's really easy to look at other people that are doing similar stuff that you're doing. And, um, or like, say someone makes a video or something, wow, that video looks so good. Part of why it looks so good is because you didn't work on it and you have literally no experience shooting it or anything. And it'll always look like something like that is like, it's different than your own thing. And mm -hmm. you're like, oh man, like I wish I could have done that. But like, you're gonna do it. So gonna like, do don't, it. don't like be put off by other people doing stuff like that. Like don't feel like someone else is trying to like steal your, your spot in doing it. Like literally just keep putting stuff out yeah. and, and like doing your own thing and, and just be confident in it. And then, yeah, that's basically what you have to do. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I think that's all the time we do have for today. But I wanted to tell you, um, your experience is amazing. Thank you for sharing it with Trust the Process, yeah. and we trust your process. So thanks <laughs> for coming through, man. Thanks, dude. It's nice to be here. Yeah. Let's go check them out on Instagram. We'll drop your socials in the link below. This has been season two of Trust the Process, episode three. We'll see you next week.